I have to explain to like a, someone in their twenties, yo, mm. for me it is just the inconvenience. Whereas for them, that's like, oh, what do you mean? That's part and parcel of mm. being an artist, right? What do you mean you don't like being on Instagram? Mm. No, I don't. I don't want to deal with any social media. Look, I'm older. Like, yeah. you, imagine you just went to work and they said, now you have to do, now you are also the PR department. Now, I'm not the fucking PR department. Mm. It, it, do you know what it is though? I think it's because I'm waiting for somebody to say to me like, oh, no, nah. no, nah, this group, this artist collective or this thing I oh, know those guys they're just operating like that and I'm gonna be like okay cool plug me in mm. let me go work because it really Cause, isn't like that because it's really not it doesn't yeah. like, all, what I get is people going yeah I feel like this yeah like my team is sitting me down every week telling me I've got to do more yeah I've got to do TikTok yeah 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 <laughs> and it's like that is what artists are. this is what people don't understand that is the conversations artists you know when you yeah. go up the chain yeah the work doesn't go away it just gets more you've now got a team mm. And the guy from the label and all these other... And honestly, this isn't my situation. Mm. But that's what I'm saying. So if you go down the chain, even more pressure to do all of that stuff yourself because mm -hmm. it's the only thing you can do, right? You better be on social media 24-7. Mm. You ain't got shit, but you've Time got a phone. management. You've got a phone. Yeah. Killer Keller. Podcast. Killer Keller. Killer Keller. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller. Mug collab. <laughs> drop. <Right. laughs> drop. <laughs> Hype. <laughs> into this shit. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Cat Podcast, live and direct, central London or central as unique to be true. So you want to be, you don't want to be anywhere else. Believe that. Big shout out to the sharers and carers and everyone that's been supporting the podcast from the last 400 episodes plus. It doesn't go unnoticed or whatever number you're at, whatever time of the year you jump on and discover us. Big shout out to yourselves as well. Hold tight to everyone that's got the Television app, free download, iPhone, Android for your street culture, sports, whether it's mini docs, full docs, DJ mixes or the notorious podcast we got you um big shout out to our sponsors the mighty hodl warriors crew over at the crypto moon boys hideout that's some nft business for you um and yo you know what time it is this is a moment been waiting for this gentleman to come through and on the eve of his new album more calling awesome and believe me, there's a lot of, a lot of avenues we can discuss on the topic of b-boy-isms. This gentleman isn't just an MC, he's not just a producer. This guy, is a, he's, a, he's an institution. He's a cult classic. He's got cult following to die for. And a lot of you lot will know him by one singular name. He goes by the name of Jest. What are we saying? Yes, sir. Pleasure to finally be in the hot seat. With the, hot, with the hot tea. <laughs> with the hot tea. I was thinking about this. Am I here or here? Just to start, but I, did, I should have asked you that before you went to full sway in the morning. Do you, do, you, do you feel like you're being watched? <laughs> right, a little, a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, you're facing up. Sometimes I feel <laughs> like somebody's <laughs> watching. Yeah, yeah. Um, just wherever I like. <laughs> yeah, just wherever you want. it's not happening. The freedom, yeah, the freedom is all yours. So all right, cool, panoramic cool. views. Um, but yeah. I'm, I'll just watch you and figure out where you're looking. Right, okay. <laughs> Yeah, cool. For a lot of people, this is going to be an absolute gift, a, a rarity that Jess is going to be speaking so candidly and chilled. He zips up his lip right now. He says no more. But it's true, isn't it? Very rare. Only because nobody wants to hear what I've got to say. <laughs> what I've got to not say. true. Not they true. The numbers are running up as we talk. What I've got to say. Might just put my foot in, in it as well, so it can be... <laughs> Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Yes, we have to be careful, especially this Got time of the day. Right, 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 um, right, right. I mean, where to begin with Jest? I mean, I can only go so far as my personal introduction to you. We have had a chat before we came in, by the way. Um, with Jest, the thing, it? we could just jump straight in where we were, but then it's like, oh, <laughs> what? What's the context of this? Yeah. So, yeah, you're going to have to do your little... Mm, do, the run, do your bit. And us pretend like we've never said do, it before. Do, yeah, do your bit. Do your, exactly, exactly. Um, I share a, a, a kindred 
uh, relationship with you, I'd say. Because when I think of Jest, I, I'm biased in how I was introduced to you as a friend. In, when right. I was 15 or 16 years old, right, right, right. we would speak to each other on the fucking phone. I was, big shout out to Chris, DJ, um, but AM. AM and Jest was the collaboration. Why and Our Productions right. was early 95, 94 from, in my mem- memory. <laughs> I got wow, sent this tape, bro. It actually could be, you know, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. People think why and I was just, yeah. you know, there was, there was fault lines to that fucking thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, Sheffield. It, yeah, it's like, it's like that old school, very, very, very old school thing in the sense of like, you know, when you hear stories of the original gang star was Big Sugar and some other guy mm. and then the mm. Guru, you know, it's not what you, what it becomes, you know, mm. we, Back then, hip hop would like kind kind of carry names. Mm-hmm. You just by default, it's like we're gonna have to carry. We were the younger, you know. We were the. It's like it's t- terrible to say. It's like gang stuff, in it. You get the whatever gang, and then you get the young whoever's. Yeah. And then as the young whoever's get older, they're like, well, we can't really call ourselves the young who we just become that now. We you, do you get do you get yeah, me? Yeah. So it was kind of like that. Like you're right, stuff like which I don't know. Do people really do that now? Is that even a thing now? I'm not sure. I think one of the I know what you re- mean. I think one of the more recent things that I thought was dope was um like how the ASAP Mob did it when, yeah. when crew when crew started going like we're just gonna put our crew name or our crew acronym that. at the start. Yeah. Of what, so if we if like back then it would have been like I'd have been Y and R Jest and yeah, yeah. you'd have been Y and R Keller cool like everyone fuck. would have been Y and R so yeah. that was that's smart that was, smart. That. That was like Joey Ramone kind of thing you know that was Joey Ramone um, but you get what I'm saying yeah you're I right. do sorry you just made me think of that when you're talking about what the lineage because because I guess a lot of people even people that are like go, yeah. f- going back are still a, a lot of them are going to be like. Oh, you mean like the the record label yeah. and like the premonitions release, and it's like no, no you no, don't mean before. that. You mean yeah, the, because the the whole thing was Y and R being the name of the label was really kind of like a fake mm. label name because it was like, well, what's the label? Oh, well, the label's the crew, and the mm. crew's Y and R. Oh, so this is Y and R Productions. Mm. It was like it never. It, then it, it kind of had to become a label a little bit later because yeah. it was too confusing trying to do the kind of like basically what it was. Everyone was self funding their own yeah. drops. Yeah. So then it would more collective we, vibe than actually official label vibe. Yeah, and then it mm. just became like this is getting too long, like divvying up, you know, because it actually started to grow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, do you, do you, <laughs> it you know, it's mad to think about it now, though. It really yeah. was like it. What it really was going like. You'd be going to wherever you were going, mm. and you'd be like, and and this is the thing as well. This is even beyond the stuff that said Y and R on it because we do this with other just the homies, right? Mm-hmm. You might be like, oh, I'm going such and such, and I'm taking however many vinyls or however many tapes. Oh, you know, the guy was asking me, can mm. oh, you know, Jess, can you get Mm-hmm. The the Y and R this release or that release and mm-hmm. you know we'd all just be giving each other like records and then trying to like Dude, get the receipt books yeah. out and get like you know the dealer prices and we you Mad. know we learn our own little it's deep to think about mm-hmm. it now actually because we were kids when you think about it now you're right of that time uh, so I, I would have been about fifteen you would have been fifteen or I remember when, okay so this is a bit this uh, is a bit earlier sorry to early. me talking about like us hustling no, but what's, records what's, what's really but you're saying what it came from when we were in yeah exactly because what's really important to factor in here is you know we were you know connecting each other through hip hop connection connections pages and next That's thing true. you meet you meet up with these people or you get given tapes and I remember getting this tape of one our productions easily like I said ninety five um, and it was almost like a pool of artists, you know, almost like, and it was so right. off kilt. It wasn't like what London was doing. It, often it didn't feel, it didn't have the same energy of what Disordered, big up DJ Disorder, was 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 um, was promoting and settling of its time. It was a, a, its own underground thing, and um, there was this one MC that stuck out for me, which was you, right. that Respect. that like Respect. had Respect. such a it was overly thought for the age you were <laughs> of like how you were delivering stuff and we just before recording you mentioned you mentioned that kind of nas status of of bring being the prodigy coming up through because you would you know I, I definitely got a sense of that even then 
Well, yeah, and what, what I was saying was like, oh, not to put put myself in that bracket. So I appreciate you saying it like that. No, but I said not, it, yeah. not to put myself <laughs> in that bracket like that. No, I well, I did say it, but in the sense of, mm. or like a Shaheem or a, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. then uh, the other example, like way later on, is like what Bad Bone ran, ran some Bad Bones in Task Force. Mm-hmm. The idea there was all there was, it was kind of almost like part of the format. Mm-hmm was like, you know, the box ticking of like, you know, what made a crew or a group like dope. And it's like, Mm. and you know, and then we've got our young, we've got the next one, you know, the next one to, you know, I guess even, um, is is it fair to say like Swiss was kind of that, when the second wave of So Solid on a very like, yeah. Come up like main in the mainstream. That's what I'm saying. It, that was it, you nurture part, champion. And yeah, then and that's part through. of the culture. Then, yeah. like in a way that maybe that doesn't exist now. I can't actually think of an example right now of like a crew where that's operating in that way. No, I where can't there's either. the there's the like identifiable younger. Well, normally it's the label's responsibility. I mean, I guess the only other person that did that used to really champion would be Wiley. Wiley would see the next young kid and just bring like Devlin, for instance, or whoever, just run them through. Yeah, but but I mean, yeah, that's true. I, I guess that was kind of just that, but that was like a constant turnover. Yeah, that was, was just like part of the thing was yeah. it moved, that was moving very quickly. But I get, yeah, I get, what, mm. I get what you're saying. That was part of how we all operated, I think. It was and a hip hop thing as well. Harry more so. was that in um, perverts. Yeah. You'd have the young DJ, you know, yeah. but I, uh, you know, we're already killing it, and then suddenly, like yeah. this fourteen-year-old comes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. You see, it was part of the culture in a different way. Yeah, and gay. Dude, Little Vicious. You remember Little Vicious? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Fucking Little Vicious. He did that tune with Dougie Fresh as well, wasn't it? But you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like a thing, right? Yeah. Like It was a thing, yeah. Big time. It, a lot of a lot of what was harvested within the culture of its time. I mean, hold on, actually, let me just let me re-up a little bit. Yeah, I because took you way off. I took, no, I'll tell you man, why, because what, so off. No, 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 it's calm. Be um, careful when you start mentioning <laughs> these iconic that's to be, you know, that's what it is, isn't it? Like, show, make, mm. Prove someone's iconic. It will take you off a whole tangent just yeah. even bringing their name up. Sorry to yeah, yeah. bring you well, back firm. A lot of people do see you iconically because of your your embodiment. I'm a Wiley. But anyway, I'm talking about sorry. this is your podcast, my brother. Iconically, you are to, to to a lot of people the embodiment of hip hop in the in in the physical in the uh, creative. You know, a lot of people you're know get, you. You're gonna have Lord Jamar commenting on this. Yeah, <laughs> real, <laughs> real, real quick, fast, in a hurry. Uh, I'm I'm real serious because you know you do graph, you do production. You do make me. You do go out live. Right. You know, just you. I remember. You know, you, you the backpacker era. You were you were the fucking poster boy of that UK scene, uh, and st- still are to a wow. greater extent. I'm, I'm I'm for real. Like people, a lot of people see like this is flowers. Interesting time. way to even. That's interesting. Even like the backpacker though, frame framing is interesting mm. to hear in 2023. Mm. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. It's bad to think that it even that that was a yeah. a, a, a thing. Mm. That was a label. How does it right? make you feel when I say that? No, do you know? I, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's, it's kind of neither here nor there, right? In the sense of, I guess it just made. I instantly wondered about like what, how that translate. And this goes back to our earlier conversation before we started recording about mm. um, shifts in the culture yeah. generationally. That that the way th- that change fundamentally. Uh, the framing, right, of how a generation views things, which th- which then affects their understanding of something it, 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 to be almost like outside of the understanding of anyone who's come from either before or after. It's very specific mm. to that time. So I think like when, you know, I just thought the last time I heard that brought up was maybe like a like buckshot mm-hmm. talking mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and saying, oh, they said we were backpack, but, you know, I had to get in the backpack or whatever, you know, <laughs> some gully, probably something like that. But it's like, it, it's very specific to an era. I just wonder, yeah. I wonder what that even means to like a, a, a 25 year old or like a 30 something. Do you totally. know what I mean? Even as young as, uh, as, as young, even as old mm-hmm. as a 30 plus. Mm-hmm. Because it's very specific to it, like the backpack era, mm. 
is like, it's interesting. Like, to be honest with you as well, like the origins of it, because mm. I always think, does is the origin of that term a New York Good call. So, um, yeah, and does it call. come from that yeah. the the when the the skate kids start to like migrate it into starts the to blur raucous kind of records era? But pre, I'd say yeah, pre. pre that though, because people because like box shot saying and oh they said side we as were well. Back. Far side was very much on that. I think they're probably like the, I think stuff like that. You yeah. definitely. Because the West Coast always had this. We're going on mad tangents just now. Because the West <laughs> Coast always was it was more accepted or at least I felt like this the people probably from the States have a different totally different perspective the the, the crossover into like the skate culture mm. Mm. was like almost more part and parcel of a lot closer and maybe, and maybe yeah. that was only because you had breakout artists like Dell mm-hmm. um that had established that image of like, yeah. oh wait, a black skater with a nose ring and he's m- making like and hard, beasties as well. hard ra- yeah, but I'm talking about black skate. That's because that's the thing. Yeah. Because even yeah. I forget the guy's name. Who's there's a really I'm, I'm not up on my skate Lupe Fiasco knowledge. No, nah, but the actual one in the skate world, there's a guy black skater yeah, from yeah. New York who was mad iconic, and I should know his name. I know, who you're and he about. was the one that was Comment starting below. to put certain. Um, people's tunes on his videos like yeah. oh, i want to skate to mm-hmm. i don't know i'm gonna people gonna cuss me for getting it wrong but it's like say like a woo yeah, yeah. or a nas or, yeah, or whatever yeah. and so th- it, but what i mean is that was still almost like the fact that he was iconic and that was like a, a thing that was kind of breaking out in that early to mid 90s it had a different aesthetic anyway right when you think of like new york mm. skate and like hoodies and Golly, like it was still kind of black. I don't know. In my mind, I still picture it more dystopian, excuse me, dystopian or just like dark. I don't know. I guess it's just the difference with how you think about New York mm. underground cultures and it being, cl- and you think of like punk and you think of like real hood mm. hip hop shit and like. Yeah. That crossover, but then when you think of like West Coast skate, not to say you don't think of it as being hood, nah. but it's always that idyllic beach life, like sunshine. Yeah, you do you get what I mean? Like and the way, and which I'm sure the West is always kind of reacting against. Part of why the West is so gangster because it's reacting against like where that term backpack, what where it where it comes from, mm. and like that. I don't know. I always I think associated Ca- with the, yeah, well, I think associated so. with some kind of skate or, uh, crossover. Yeah. Who had the backpack or like college college kid, kids that are college studying? Kids, yeah, but I don't know about that. That never really sat right with me because I always mm. felt like when you think about the kids with when it was the backpack era. This is a mad, it's a mad one. This isn't is it? a mad time, but it's yeah. kind of relevant though in a way to yeah. the broader hip hop conversation. When I think of what what people when you know what people were referring to as the backpack kids, I don't remember it. Not to say that the kids weren't studying, but nobody was taking their school books to the jam or to the. Uh, it was people who had a backpack to have their spray paint in yeah, it yeah. or to have their My, uh, records or whatever. Re- yeah, or their rhyme book, and she, people was writing the, I the big know. ass headphones with a tape. Players, yeah, I it? mean, people people forget people still read books. <laughs> you, just, it didn't, you couldn't sit on a train with a phone out. You'd yeah. have, to, have a, just people had, you know, I don't know. I don't know. That's a total mad one, but yeah, it's a mad one. That's was well, just interesting that you've said that's part of because it is. But I was, I still don't really know, fully know what it means though. But I, I you know, yeah, I, I, but, I, I, yeah. I know but then you know. I guess that's like all media terms of like trying to pigeonhole yeah. culture. I don't know. But I think with with you, and I get, and again, this is why I think people respond to you, like in in their in the following of because I think what you managed to capture and still managed to capture is that time in hip hop where you had to walk out how you talk it. Now, when we start doing these things, when we start being the artists that we become, we are we're we're, we're pretending to make it. There's a moment though when you hit your mid thirties and all of a sudden it's like oh shit we're it we're it now and you can't go back you're living off this thing now right so 
you've you've gone to the point where I think a lot of people they 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 they, they, they can't they've never reached that. But you, as a conduit, you you exist in this world of hip hop, right? Right. They, I mean, they I, see you like that. I, I genuinely think that. Yeah. No. I mean, and that's so they should. I mean, not even to be like on some self-congratulatory sh- shit, but I mean, it's the one thing that you can always, it's the one thing that's not subjective. We could sit here and debate mm. whether, and it's funny because one of the things, oh, yeah, you're going to make, I'm going to pull you up now because you said something early on that, that, mm. I, that, that I thought, oh, I need to come back to that, where you said, oh, I'm biased. And I was like, oh, you're biased because that, that's it. The fact to even use the term biased in the description is like, uh, what's what's the word what's the word I'm looking for that that shows that like my name like if my name comes up or my my art if you mm-hmm. or whatever comes up mm. this divide not divisive might not be the right word but it's there's a debate there is a debate oh you know I see. I'm by bi- you're biased because you're biased in the debate of whether <laughs> to, to, the um, the marmite do you love it or do you hate it do you fuck with it or or, or like oh uh, uh, you know oh I like I respect it mm-hmm. but it's not for me and I think that's fair because mm. I think that's what all art should do you know I don't 100%. have any issue but what I was good but I, the reason I say that is just to say like all of that is subjective but being able to point at someone and go oh shit my man's still doing the thing you know mm. like that is, you can't argue with that. Then you can have a whole argument whether they fell off or they this or they that. Mm-hmm. But in anything that's respected, right? Mm-hmm. Or like, if you know, if you're going to get a guy to come and fix your plumbing, mm-hmm. you know, and you're like, oh, what? And your mum's like dead. And you're like, oh, he's still doing it. Mm-hmm. Right. You're like, okay, cool. Man's been doing this shit for like 40 years. He's yeah, going yeah, yeah, yeah. he knows what's up. And, and know? I must add at this point, make no mistake about it, that, if you're on my podcast, there's going to be an absolute bias. That a lot of people are going to be like, "What the fuck is Jess doing on this camp?" You know what I mean? Right, like, right, because right, that right. is that's the marmite oh, effect. Right. Okay. We can't be t- too precious about like these sorts of uh, uh, people that you know. Th- this is life. This is life right, stuff. Right, and, and if right. we're not if we're not uh, being you know liked and disliked at any point, then then, then there's a problem, isn't there? Um, right, I was real. talking more in the context of bias, as in the childhood experiences that I had. Right. In, yes. In the sense that. I, I, I see you a lot more than the records you put out. That's where I'm coming from. Okay. I see you a lot more as the graph, and, and I can say this because we, we used to do inlay cards together. Yeah. We used yeah. to draw inlay cards together. So I, I always saw you, it's a total package. Not a lot of people know that you do graffiti. That's why in my mind I'm right. like, I'm slightly more privy and biased to the fact that it's more than just the music. Right, right. You're the total package, bro. And just, ref, you know, throwing more flowers your way, it seemed to me that, you know, that you just had a hand on hip-hop. You just knew how to... Fu- you know how to do it. Just being a fan and just dedicating a lot of time to what you're a fan of and then trying to... It's, I guess it's a thing that where, it, you know, it's naturally... You, hip-hop, or at least it used to be this, I think, in the era that we grew up, you know, or the, not even... Just, just up. I mean, I can't really judge. Nah, do you know what? That's not fair. I can judge now because I could even see it. Say with like the way my daughter um, understands it as a six-year-old now. It's like the the very understanding of what hip hop is has a kind of competitive mm. element in the sense of you're invited to compete in a kind of inclusive way mm. do, you, do you know what I mean like they you know if you think about how, how much part of just kind of mainstream culture now that uh, there's a mainstream understanding of it you know a dance off that's mm. like a which is just a b-boy battle isn't it that's yeah. all that's what a dance off is really <laughs> or like oh it's a rap battle they're mm. gonna have a rap battle these things are so like just in the mainstream Public psyche is just yeah, there. and uh, right. It, it, it's like, so I think maybe that's part of what it is. Is that hip hop's just saying that if you are interested in it, you know, to a kind of certain, you get obsessed with it at a, at a certain age. You're gonna, mm. you're 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 gonna start to participate in some way, right? 
Like, yeah. Even if people, are, even it's like, even those guys that are kind of like, just the quiet guys who just know all the stuff and they don't seem to be doing anything. And then, you know, they become, suddenly they become like A&Rs or something, mm. right? Because they've got a, they're studying it in a, in a way that's, it's like Chuck D always talks about it in like a sports kind of way, right? I think it just has a little bit of that to it. Do you know mm. what I mean? I don't know. Excuse me, I have to just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's definitely... I don't think I was ever consciously like, yo, I'm going to try, I'm going to be the greatest... But that again, that's part of it, isn't part, it? The minute you're writing silent. a rhyme, you're that's yeah. what you're meant to be saying in the rhyme, right? Yeah. yeah. Or if you're going out, you know, all of it is about being. There is an element of that self because. See, this is what I think has got misframed in a way now, hasn't it? With hip hop, right? Is that like the idea that it is just this massive like ego exercise. And that, that and that being like a negative part of it, right? Especially mm. in today's kind of culture, but it's a response to being disempowered. Mm. It's do you know what I mean? Whereas what's happened now is it's become almost like it's become the voice of privilege. Mm. You, so that frame, so that whole ego, I'm the best shit, has now almost become like a negative element in it because it's like, well, these guys are just the richest, the mm. most famous, the most well known, and they're just saying they're the best. Well, they're no different. They, just have to rap. they might as well be Tory politicians, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I, but it's like, but the reason that that's part of the culture isn't because the culture comes from. Mm. Uh, lauding your privilege over everybody else. It mm. comes from being, having no privilege or being underprivileged mm -hmm. and being, trying to assert yourself. Mm -hmm. you, do you know what I mean? Mm. That there is something that you can do, that you can big yourself up. Yeah. It, do, do you know what I mean? That yeah. you can, uh, you know, raise yourself out of your circumstances just throughout of just applying your own mind to... Uh, manifest physically manifesting a positive self image. Mm. That is deep. Like that is something that is just not to be overlooked in understanding like what this thing like really is. Mm. It, it's there's not because what is there's no it's the it's something that unless we let it become corp, completely corporate controlled, it's something that you can literally make yourself into an asset through being good at it right mm. which there's other things you could do that with too it's not say it's the only thing but it's like it has its own little mm. unwritten esoteric like set of it's one of those it's like where do you go to learn it though it's, mm. you can't just go to the whatever mm -hmm. institute the, the the killer keller institute for hip hop <laughs> and get your get your paperwork and mm. then now you're qualified no. you can't with a lot of things, you can do it like that. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is kind of like it gives it, it gives a it gives a lot of autonomy. It does, and I think that's why it's dangerous as well. It's mm. also why it's very fucking dangerous. You mentioned the, the braggadocious, obviously the braggadociousness of uh, of rap. With your lyrics, there's a certain, of course, I think you, you, the confidence overpowers the subject matters you talk about and the way in which you 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 script a track. The influences of cinema. Movies. I'm pretty sure you're banging into your movies, um, right? And then, then there's the, you know, there's the classic tunes which you create. You know, Cosmic Gypsy being one of them. I mean, <laughs> just your verse alone on that is just oh, fucking. I like what, what imagery did you? It's like you're up there with the clouds, literally. Like, thank you. Do you know what I mean like there's a lot more depth than thought that that actually indirectly Over, overthought <laughs> overthought perhaps but maybe not i think i think what yeah. what that does is it, it it empowers you with the intellect so rather than just simple battle cuss at battle rhymes or you know like you say what you're talking about being the braggadocious actually the articulation in which you're you know you're sending out your messages that's the strength that's right i think for, for wouldn't you wouldn't you say 
Yeah, but it, I mean, maybe I don't know. I mean, I'm not even. I don't even know. I'm not. I guess I'm not even trying to self critique to that level. But I guess I'm just think if I apply it to like how, um, you know, being a fan, who people I'm a fan of, or like you know, from the fan perspective of like what draws me in, like to the, you know what I, you know people that I think are probably like the some of the best to ever do it, and it's like. It's like we were talking about it earlier. It's you can't just be all tech. You can't just be all technical and all ability. Like mm. you, you having just like like you talk about like movies. You can make a movie where it's like yeah, all the cinematography is beautiful and it's well acted. And then you know you can tick all the technical boxes. And then just still be like, I did. I didn't really get anything from it though. Like I didn't really take nothing away. Like what? I don't. It wasn't what we didn't. Because that, that the tech the technique isn't the soul of the thing. The technique is a way of expressing the soul of mm. of something, right? Mm. So it's got to still have some other element of just. What is outside of your control like that. Did you get what I mean? Like a had, higher, a higher, a higher thing, thing but yeah. or even just like an element of chaos or an element of like the extra spice in your life that gives you the, the yeah, energy the, for the, the yeah, the, the, the thing that just wouldn't, you know, like this wouldn't be the same right now if I didn't have the four hours Illuminati <laughs> OVO Drake mug for, for those the, for those of you who are listening and are watching there is there's an L cup the, the whole yeah. you know that's like a that's the thing in itself yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now now put it out there it's a conspiracy mug but, but these are the things that like no, you couldn't have like you mm. know you don't make that up and then it's like a reference and then now that, now that's in the universe oh my like God, now that's, that's in deep. the universe yeah no but you Amazing. see what I mean yeah. but, but that shit you if you try and take that shit out of it the whole thing is a sterile fucking process. I don't give a fuck how technically dope you are. Mm. That's my attitude towards it. And I apply that to myself. Like, I don't enjoy that shit. Like, I don't enjoy... I was thinking about it today, just, like, the whole excitement of, like, the energy of behind, like, going to the studio or going to, like, the art space or whatever to collaborate with mm. someone... Or even just you might just be going to check someone, but you, the environment is geared towards instantly plugging mm. in and creating something from an idea if the idea comes up. Because mm -hmm. it's like, well, you know, this is an art space. You fuck it, paint it now. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or this is a studio. Just record it now. Mm. Or you, do you know what I mean? Whatever. Like, I, I, maybe it's just me, but I just feel like that is not enough of a priority in people's endeavours uh, anymore because it can all be mailed in. It can all be... Like, we can sit here and have this conversation mm, mm, and then mm. I can still... I can either stay and put put the verse down for or I can be like, all right, peace, bro. And yeah, next week, I'll hit me up and I'll email, email me that thing. And, you know, I'll just be sat in my own little space mm, or mm. my ones or whatever. And, this, and then things start to lack that. Over, you know, the, yeah. the Illuminati mug, the extra spice element, or the thing that made it. Yeah, yeah. All the best. But you don't. You feel. You you don't hear. You sometimes it's just part of the. It's so, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just part of going just painting by numbers mm. because you're doing it because you can, and instead of just doing it because because you you are doing it like mm. just do it like. I don't know what if that makes sense. You get what I mean, though. Yeah, it like, does hundred percent. I feel okay. like we're it's too easy to put to schedule the creative process in now, yeah. like to put it in the, ske schedule it. Because we're so distracted. We've got so much fucking shit to look at and so many mm. things to respond to. Mm -hmm. The idea of just being in, always in the process or that like, even that the people, you know, like I think the, people have this idea that artists, if artists are just around artists, but see, the difference between back in the day and now, it, again, it's the distractions. If you're around a bunch of other artists mm. and other creatives every day, I guarantee you, and you can, you can attest to this, they're scheduling in the creative 
what they're doing in the rhythm of their day is fucking social media and shit mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not like actually just doing... Being creative or anything. Just, yeah, because they're not tuned out from yeah. the fucking world to be yeah. creative. Yeah. They're like, it's my job to be answerable to the world. So the yeah. whole fucking goalpost, you know, the whole moving of the goalposts yeah. has just kind of... But, yeah, but as long as when I'm not online i do this little verse or i do this little beat or i do this mm. little thing and i get it to the platforms yeah, yeah. and i and i justify my constant fucking presence <laughs> it's true instead of just be like yo put that shit down and just do that do and so. do and do like 50 of them before you even come out with one that you want to give to people whereas now the pressure is to be like Yo, whatever we did today, yo, we need to get that up. Like, we need to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, we made this song. Like, we need to get it up. There's no, because it's almost like it's counterintuitive to your fucking survival instincts, even to sit on shit nowadays. Which yeah. so in that in itself is going to totally change the nature of art, right? Yeah, yeah. Because that wasn't the thing before. You couldn't, if you're a painter and you're working on a collection, you couldn't just be like that one day where you do the one piece that you're excited about mm. suddenly run to the gallery and go now nah, fuck all the whole fuck the collection just this one Check let's sell out. it now yeah. i want to sell it tomorrow yeah. i need that p like let's mm-hmm. go mm-hmm. you know it's like that's what we're kind of making people do with art because the the market the play you know the platforms and, and therefore the market is geared towards that instant it's not like sit back mm-hmm. you know prep up all your shit and then when you're ready present it and see you know, mm. let people pick from the collection. I don't know. I don't know. No, I'm, no, I'm you're bugging. Right. I'm going off a tangent no, anyway. This is fucking know, awesome. I don't know how we got <laughs> to that. Bob. No, no, we're here. We're in the pocket now. This is fucking great. Okay, so you, you know, you we'll talk. Well, I mean, I'm really digging it. This is this is exactly what I wanted you in for. This is exactly what it's about. Pretty much give you the mic and say what's on your mind. Right, right, That's right. the shit. This is what people want. Right. So, do you think the system? Do you think the industry is built like that now? Like, in, everyone has these arguments about Spotify literally just cook, making people cookie cut, turn things around quickly, because mm. it's not about, it's, it's not about um, uh, uh, quality, it's about the quantity. Yeah. And then it's kind of built like that now, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's not, but I don't, I, but I don't, it, to, but to say, oh, it's because the industry's built like that, I think the industry is just responding to, to what the, people to are doing. The culture, yeah, yeah, in a way. Like, they, this always, it's not, it's not, it's a two way street. It's not as straightforward as it only goes in one, di- you know, moves mm-hmm. in one direction. But I think it's not, um, they, they've, they've, you're right. They've developed models now that incentivize that. But the development of those models has come out of free access ultimately. Mm, yes. Trying to like claw back free access and find some kind of like compromise uh you know mm. v- way of financializing if we talk you know specifically mm. with music right um and the person who loses out the most in that new model is the artist who is now getting a fraction of a penny and i i do i think it's you know it's there's a massive argument for just not mm. partaking in it at all. It's it's mm. deep. Like the the whole most deaf argument. Have you heard his argument? No, tell for me. Why it's his argument for not having any of his catalog up, and why he wouldn't allow the Black Star stuff to go on general kind of DSPs. It's mm-hmm. just on like a subscriber yeah. service or whatever. The the simplest way to put he he put it in the most simple terms, and I thought that's that's perfect people need to think about it like that he was like who did the maths on fractioning dividing up a penny Mm. for me to he's like you know that's meant to be the smallest yeah that's that's the smallest unit on the yeah yeah yeah. on the scale you know like how you know who decided like Mm. how did you know and if i'm gonna sit here and say that that is i'm gonna accept that my art Mm. is worth a fraction of a penny for you to access like he's just like nah I'm not down and I thought you know fair, that is fair oh, yeah, and if you're him and you can afford mm. to take that stance then I think more more power because yeah. if more people that did could afford to take that stance 
did, then the, again, the industry would have to adapt because mm. the industry would be like, well, shit, we haven't got this guy's music and we haven't got this late woman's music and we haven't yeah, got yeah. this group's music. You know, and then they'd have to, be, okay, right, we're going to have to find a better way of doing mm. But as long as there's a million starving artists out here, which there's mm. always, yeah. there's just more and more and more. You know, there's more artists and they're more starving. <laughs> like yeah. bo both of those things are exponentially growing uh -huh. at the same time. Then, you know, it's an, it's an endless supply of, and I'm not to even say that people are it's deliberately make it, you know, cookie cut up shit. But like you're saying, like what is... It's not realistic to be able to spend this many years making a record and then put mm. it out. It's just that's not. It's, it's not that, that's the opposite end. That's the opposite end. And see, so it's like actually that's a that's too far fetched of a thought nowadays when you know making a living is paramount. Value uh, and guarantees, like back in up even up until like maybe two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, to this day, but not so much. The the main the main emphasis was getting your music on a hard copy getting right. it out there distributing yourself um, doing it thoroughly from the shops to the shop right, counter right, to the customers right, right. the mail order the, the you know of course there's patron and all sorts of things like now but do you think like do you think ha throwing down that kind of money with the ambition of getting the record into certain manuf uh, distributors and certain shops and certain people's hands people that are you know so far removed even from a you know I mean nowadays we're all in touch and everything but the music audience, they revel in hard copies and inlay yeah, cards and what's yeah. going on. Like, <clears throat> you as a, as YNR Productions, as Jess, throwing money down, that's a that's a high risk. That's like, no, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to see it to the end because I've put this money down. Like it's, right. It's, right. It, it, I, I don't think there's that panic in the back of people's minds anymore so much as they used to be, right? As in, you think what there's not the panic when people do that, or you putting your money where your mouth is essentially. It's like that. That's that. That. So, as in, you don't have to have that panic if you're yeah. doing like a digital yeah. only. You're not if you're not having to put yeah. the money behind it. Yeah. I mean, it's weird. That's it's a, that's a weird one in a way because I'd say it's definitely swung back towards there being a, 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 a like a, it's different, but mm. the market for physical. Now, you, you know, I mean... I'm seeing a lot of it, back, yeah. Yeah, if you remember that period where, like, every... Well, first of all, there was just, like, the whole line wire, everything free. Mm. Then it was, like, everything for sale on iTunes. But if you don't want to buy it, you know, you're probably not going to have to. You're going to rip it off your heart. And also, mm. see, the thing that, they, that they've been slowly doing, which is going to catch up to me at some point soon, is, like, phasing out um, CD drives. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because yeah. you know, it's just rip, rip the files. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they were like, "Oh, wait a minute, shit, we need to stop putting them. Get rid of them, get rid of them. Stop putting them in the computer. Like, no, yeah. you know, you pay for the for an upscale. Now people are like, yeah, but you don't need that now. It was like, well, it depends what you're trying to do with your machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the headphone jack. <laughs> people were like, well, you don't need the head old school headphone jack anymore. Yeah. Because it depends who you are. If yeah. You're, if you're a DJ and every other bit of equipment, you're in the music business, and it's and all every that, other yeah. bit of kit you use still has a fucking mini jack on mm. it thanks for taking it off the computer really fucking helpful yeah, 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 you know yeah, no yeah. so it depends what you you're using it for so yeah ge gearing it like i don't know it's kind of had like a, there's been this spring back thing of like because music's become so disposable mm. you want to buy the cd mm. or the vinyl or the whatever even if you're just going to put it on the wall mm -hmm. to be like nah but look i really I fuck fucked with, with it that. yeah and also to have access because your internet gets cut off. You can't play that You're fucking fucked. song, you know, or whatever. So I think that does occur to people sometimes as well. Like, mm. oh, no, that one, I want to have... Or like, if, when I go on holiday and I'm in the little remote wherever and I've got the little... Mm. There's a little CD thing in the spot or whatever, mm. I can play it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, mm. maybe I'm maybe I'm just saying like, <laughs> like an old person. But also around the world, everywhere doesn't have... The you know yeah, yeah, we we always thinking like oh everybody's just instantly onto the latest technology like that's not the whole Definitely the whole not. planet ain't at that you know moving yeah, yeah. at that economic pace so. exactly exactly no you're right so yeah I don't know put yeah it's, it's I mean it's still a risk right because the market's always shifting hmm. and how you're doing it and so it's still a bit like oh shit we're gonna spend that money much? yeah and also it's way harder because the economy I mean look from it's a whole nother conversation about small mm. businesses in this country. 
mm. any type of small business in this country is fucking struggling. Like yeah, Brexit yeah. and all the things that have, you know, and it's like they can blame it on yeah. Putin and all that, whatever. But there's so, the, the, the government and, you know, the financial policies mm. that have been going on, even things going on with banks and shit, there's yeah. so much madness going on yeah. that makes it harder to do things. Things are way slower. Things are way more expensive. Mm. And, you know, like, so, you know, you hear people talk about vinyl turnaround mm. or whatever. So if you think about a certain time where that was the prime format, mm. the idea that it would take you however many months to turn a vinyl around was unthinkable because mm. you need to react, the, the industry had to react quicker. It'd be like, the white, you know, yeah. this, this record's, you know, getting play. Shit, we need... However, many, you know, we yeah. thought we only needed a couple hundred copies. Shit, we need however many thousand cop, you know, and get a prep. All of that is just now they'll be like, okay, cool, we'll book you in for August, and just yeah, yeah. you can't. The, so it's the whole thing has has, has shifted. It's mm. not the same. It's different. But again, if you're old school artist or artist from a certain period, you've got a different yeah. type of market. I don't know. It's, it's a bit, but you know, fair play to anyone now starting out who is mm. putting money behind themselves I don't know if they are I don't know if it's now just become it was a big risk back then anyway I don't know if it's become just a thing now where it purely is mm. I know what you mean like just the throw it up on Spotify or whatever well just the, whether the whether anyone I don't know you know that that thing where it was a, a viable thing for someone to think oh maybe like if we scrape a grand together and Press the record. Yeah. A, a kid, a people do, are younger doing that. There's labels. Sure. There's like, not. there's underground labels. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if there's that kind of, because you don't need to, right? When that was the only thing you could do mm. to get your song. On the on the radio, for right, instance. Right, yeah. like, it, it, like just, it just on the, on in the shop window, on yeah. the table, like in front of people, you had to do it. So everyone had a, yeah, you know, I just remember that time. It's just know. being so intense. The whole the, putting out records back in the day and having all that invested in tra and all that attention on the thing, and it's just God, it, like the headache part, yeah, of it, the drama part. Yeah, of it. man. Yeah, yeah. See, that's interesting because I feel like I guess it did it did get like that at that time because of the stakes involved in it. It mm. just suddenly got like. What do you mean the PR isn't... What do you mean? You know what I mean? I should be able to talk to... It's that kind of well, thing. Well, no, but the, yeah, but the fact <laughs> that by the... Yeah, but when you were putting out those things... It's, it's, it's interesting you say that, man, because this is the thing. It, it started... As soon as the expectation shifted, mm -hmm. that's what fucked it up. Because yeah. we, you know, we were doing the same thing. Like, we were over-investing in shit going... Oh, well, if the such-and-such -such album just mm. did X amount of copies... Mm -hmm. Then why won't this one? You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. it, it, see that. See this goes back to something we were talking about earlier. Actually, where to me, part of thinking about it now, looking back, part of having that illusion, and I think everybody suffered from this a little bit of thinking that like if X is doing whatever, then Y can do mm -hmm. a, a similar level. Might mm -hmm. not do. As well, it might do better, but mm. that's the kind of bar mm -hmm. because that's the market for hip hop or that's mm. the market for rap or that's the market for whatever you want to put descri description you're putting yeah, yeah. in those in, in them quotation marks, right? Where we're at now, it's way it's way clearer that like there isn't a hip hop market or a hip hop fan base. There's this artist fan base, there's that artist fan base. This rapper's fan base has never even heard of that rapper. Mm -hmm. Like, there's not this broad thing where back in the day, like, mm -hmm. the person into fucking Ice T was into De La Soul at the same time, even though it didn't sound anything like it. Mm -hmm. But that, because you're just into hip hop, you're just into rap, there's yeah. only that much of it. Yeah. Now it's like so specific. And I think at that time, what where the stakes were suddenly like really stressful which is interesting now thinking because i could kind of see that looking back like where how what the position that you were in the mm. minute people were saying well, what, yo do yo do this do that mm. it's like there was suddenly this thing happening where the specific artist or the specific 
you know, brand name or whatever, that's what was selling it. And even if the other thing looked and did, it was exactly, you know, fucking looks and smells and yeah, tastes yeah, yeah, the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not. It's a different name on it. It's a different. Mm -hmm. And the levels were suddenly like, it wasn't quantifiable. Mm -hmm. Whereas there was that little period of like, everybody's pressing up 300 vinyl mm. or 500 vinyl. And you know, and that's the market yeah. and you sell it and that's good. And like now the song's out there and like maybe if something's a breakout success, it's like, oh, we're repressing it or we re yeah. But even the things that didn't do crazy mm. did a certain amount because again, that's the only way people could get the song. Mm -hmm. So people were more willing to pay yeah. for the... But then all of a sudden there's this like, oh no, the first 12, we've got to press up however many thousand because whatever was the last release on the label, it probably in your case, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, where exactly. Where there's these breakout yeah. singles, certain releases are going like, raw. we just yeah. did how many through, I don't know, Groove Attack or something, yeah, took yeah. however many. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, but I'm, true, I'm yeah. all right. Because yeah. there's these weird little pockets suddenly of like, oh shit, there's a market to sell yeah. this in fucking Bulgaria or mm. wherever the fuck, Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 totally. But then it's like, yeah, but if... It doesn't quite hit on like the London circuit, and then it doesn't get picked up in one of these markets. Then the kind of little super super underground network that like a disorder or whatever mm. that was like what had created the springboard for you to be in a position of pressure mm -hmm. of a, what a, how a record's going to perform that's not really functioning anymore because the bottom's kind of fallen out of that because the things have become more mm -hmm. like you're going to HMV to buy it. Yep. So it all suddenly turned into like a fucking circus to be fair, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah, People man. People started disappearing. Yeah. Things started, <laughs> money started disappearing. Yeah, it's true. But you're right. But all of that comes with the, if, if shit had just steadily stayed at like, you know, built from on that foundation level, but mm -hmm. it was like, as soon as there was, Yo, you're giving young people performance anxiety and shit. Think about it, bro. You're a young man. That's yeah. deep to be hearing you say yeah. that, like, yo, it was just... Yeah. Because yeah. it, it did become a headache, but yeah. it was like, for me, the headache was more like... Well, people disappearing, things disappearing. But, you know, just... Yeah, I don't know. There wasn't enough. It wasn't structured enough. I no. mean, maybe you felt like it was too structured. I think maybe it was a little too structured from one side. Mm. And too chaotic on the other. the other, yeah. yeah. It's mad, isn't it? You've always been the kind of character, though, that, that has been really resilient. And I see that you were talking about audiences and how you hit mark certain demographics and areas. And you've always been very broad in your audience like yeah because i think all that is is like secondary yeah it, it, right that's mm. like what they what comes with a market like an industry trying to find a wider market for whatever it is you do you know mm. it's like you're selling a you know like a, a a drinks brand that's selling in the bar and doing well. And then mm. at some point the guy is like, how do we get this? How do we, how do we frame this to get it in Sainsbury's <laughs> or Tesco's or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Suddenly that's a whole different beast. So like that's, but if you're just still at the core of it, you're trying to make the best drink or you're trying to make or do whatever it was you were, mm. you initially set out to do, mm. you're going to keep doing that. Right. And mm. then you let other you know, not like you let other people worry about it, but because you, you, you need to be aware of it, but know that it's separate. Like, I think that's why I don't have a problem with being aware of it, because I know that it's separate. Like, I know that, like, if you're... How I'm being sold something isn't the be all... Yeah, it's like you're being sold... Um, an artist based on like a subgenre. Mm -hmm. But do you like the artist? You know, or like you, what I mean is just, it doesn't really, okay, say for example, you hear them talk about like the Neo Soul thing and saying, oh, like we never, mm. we didn't, you know, the artists involved are like, we never called ourselves that. Mm. And we don't, didn't, some of them really didn't like being called that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like, that's just what the labels and that came up with. Which happens we, a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, it, and but it's like, 
we it, but it's still we still not it's compared to the backpacker conversation. Yeah, yeah. We still got some vague idea of what it me you know what of, it signified of like what the frame yeah. that is that it's setting up. Yeah. Right. So like one of the things with with it as well with any selling any form of art is like who's got disposable income like you're 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 unfortunately like it's capitalistic in its in the sense of selling any selling anything you know especially if it's something that's a luxury mm. good we're not like out here you know supplying utilities or energy or baking a yeah, making yeah. bread from you know what I mean Depending it's like, the will or anything you know? right that's so, no, so what I'm saying it's like if you're gonna concern yourself too much with what, who the per, who's buying it I don't know that's it's deep that's no, another no, no, no. It's, it's another deeper philosophical conversation about whether you should be concerned because it's about super, the consumer. That, yeah, would that be not? superficial? Would that be superficial in thinking that too deeply about who? I mean, obviously, within a business, you've yeah, got to think would, of those things. Would, but it, yeah, it would. But then I'm just thinking about it that, like, um, from a level of kind of uh, like an ethics yeah, level. Yeah, I get you. It, it, you know, it's like, do you care that the crackheads? Killing themselves, you know, mm. ruining, destroying their life with the crack that you're set. Like them, yeah. the, I'm saying that the ethic of do you even what do you even think about there being an impact mm. on the end consumer? Mm. So whether the, not even the, whereas what you're framing is more like the responsibility being the other way. So like, oh, I'm going down the, I'm going down this ego, kind of. What, what was the term you used? Like a self-absorber. You didn't say self-absorber. Uh, uh, but, um, superficial. So yeah, superficial mm. in the kind of like, um, th th that's very like, or, you know, almost kind of like um narcissistic mm. mm -hmm. sense of, rather than it just, the, the art just being something you just do mm. because mm -hmm. you just do but does that does that make sense? Yeah, it does like, make sense. You 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 because framing it in that way is like the responsibility is lying with the consumer to um, define the artist or to to um, provide. Mm -hmm. They're there to provide you with an income, an outlet, a fucking some validation, some mm -hmm. praise, some whatever, right? But then the other side is whether you're like, shit, what am I actually giving them? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I, do I have a responsibility yeah. to saying like, shit, this person like worked or did whatever they had to do to like pay for that ticket or pay for that CD or pay for that vinyl or mm. even that, even though it's a shitty percent, the point fraction of a penny, yeah. but when they pay their Spotify Bill, that's still a significant. Mm -hmm. They're not paying a fraction of a penny. Direct, you, you mm -hmm. get yeah, me? Yeah, like, yeah, even yeah. though I only get a fraction of a penny, they're still paying. Yeah. You, so you know whether we have a responsibility to be like, um, no, we should think about who's buying it. In there, I guess yeah. what I'm saying is, uh, I'm, I'm, and it's probably bad. I'm, it's easier for me to go shit. As long as someone's buying it, I'm cool. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sweat it. But I, but I, mean, I, I might, I might start sweating if the people. I don't know. No, because I tell you what I was gonna say, just to add, add some sort of value to what you mean. Because if you're doing, if you're putting in the which you do, I think you're one of the few artists uh, there at the moment that work rate is visible. Like you're not visible as in like, hey, I'm doing this today. Hey, I'm doing this today on social media. It's more like the the work ethic just seems to be a lot more obvious in how well thought through the verses are how how well presented the music is and how methodical you go about making so sometimes it doesn't need a lot of explaining it just seems to be that you you base a lot of the integrity on the, as i'm showing you here if you're not watching and listening here you know the the latest episode of, of right. your career here right. you know this is hard work this is right, hard, right, right. hard work, and sometimes it doesn't need so much explaining to a, to a, to the consumer, does it? If you've put that much energy in, right? But I mean, it's, again, it's like you still expect. I mean, I think especially nowadays, you're still expected to mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> this constant. Like you know, if you think about. 
we're explaining it right now. Like mm. this, what this format didn't exist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you, no one was, you know, it's and, true. Yeah, not you know, like we talk up. So like back in the day, people were selling like I don't know, you get a dark and cold. I'm, I was gonna say even VHS. Is it even was that shit even on VHS? I was about to say DVD, but I was like, no. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, but you know, and it's like we, you know, we want to see, and all, you know, or I, I'm trying to think of stuff that pre predates that, but like short form interviews, mm -hmm. freestyle, da, da 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 da. So even back in the day, it's not like oh, back in the day you could go in the record shop and get like a f hour long MTV rap special, an about hour long just conversation yeah. about. Mm. general talk and the creative process etc yeah. like the, so we're probably further and further into a world where it does rec everything fucking requires yeah constant explanation or Nothing's at least an afterthought is it everything is has to be considered doesn't it well yeah and, and also it's like once it's out there it has to be you have to be constantly reminded because mm. you're going against you know, you're competing with so much noise. Mm. There's not the, the, you know, there's so much of like all the way up and down the chain mm. explanation is required. <laughs> oh, I think, I mean, I get, I guess, yeah, I don't know. That's a broader, I don't, I'm not sure if I took with the right, what, what you meant from that. No, this statement, is all good. This is all good. Just, uh, this is all good. What's interesting is I think as artists, we yourself, people, they analyze, overanalyze shit. Right. I think in a situation, for instance, like a podcast, is these are not these are not afterthoughts. These are every move and thing is critiqued by yourself, and, you know, whether yeah, it's a yeah, studio yeah, 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 or it's yeah. how you en envisage the rollout to be. You know, and the pr yeah. production itself. And, yeah, for, for sure. You know what I mean, like from the live show it, as well. Like, how is that going to be? How is that song ever going to be reinterpreted? Or what is it I'm going to do? Everything to the wire is critiqued, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what, I'm, that's what I mean. It can't. You can't. Um, I feel like things were obviously scheduled out and all that back in the day. You still had campaign. That's not mm. new. But the level of kind of scrutiny, the the kind of level of a microscope that you're under mm. now, and how frequently you're under that microscope. Is is totally different in the sense of like, like doing live right. Like I said to you earlier, I was like, oh, doing live radio. Oh, I kind of forgot what that that's even a thing because <laughs> yeah. everything's digital, everything's pre-recorded, and every, yeah. right? And it's and it, and it's just like, which by the way, we don't edit it on here, okay, baby. This is the so real you're gonna get all the waffle. No, yeah. he's not gonna get to cut any. Like of I said, waffle not a lot of people get a lot of jest get, like oh, this, so you get all away. it. It's all good because it's rare, but it's thought through, right. and this is the platforms. So these are the things that we have to consider when doing it, right? Like, yeah, and and, and, and other stuff, other things mm. come out of that. that mm. when, it's back to the thing you know because mm. it's the same applies what I was saying with art where the little factor that the little un, you know the thing that you couldn't plan mm. same in conversation if you don't edit then you get all those little uh, easter eggs and like nuggets <laughs> of nuggets. like madness that you wouldn't have got right yeah um, where were we though I was on I had a little I've lost my just over I, things being overthought to the wire and how important it is to keep those oh like the campaign and the, yeah, yeah and no, that, there was yeah. just more of a, there was more of a like tangible separation right and you know you know what I mean by this like that separation of your kind of day to day life even if you're coming out your front door and someone's going oh oh you Keller oh you're right <laughs> mate like you might be you might get you might have the level of celebrity where you get recognised on the street or whatever right but it's still there wasn't like phones weren't coming out and things mm. weren't. So that kind of separation of right. like, and then when you are doing, and this is why I refer to live radio. That's what I was saying. Live radio. Why I refer to live radio. Those things were like when you were in the, when the spotlight is on, mm. it's like, it's this clear, it's this tangible separate. Now you're at the BBC going through the security check or now you're at the, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? So the, this, this kind of idea of like, you know, you get artists who say that they're like kind of introvert, whatever, but then you're like, well, that's a contradiction because you're doing this artist 100%. shit. But actually it's true. They are. Yeah. They're comfortable doing their little artist thing because they control it. 
control how, you know, I'm the fucking saying, and I control how I present myself and I control, who am mm. I going to speak to? Oh, I'm talking to Keller, right, calm. You know, we are fucking control freaks, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... With technology, even more controlled as well. Right, That's the other thing. Right, so, the, so then when it was more like, there was more bells and fucking whistles. When you're doing it, it's mm. like all the fucking... Do, 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 Pageantry do, 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 and yes. drive and everything and then, that's coming your way. And then it's and cut. Mm. And then it's like, ah, and then, you know, and then the wig comes off, right? <laughs> but, you know, and that was cool. And like anyone who knew was like, oh, this is where she, where he or she takes the, mm. or they take the wig off, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, that's cool because I'm behind the, I'm this side of the, you know, mm. we actually do. Do you know what I mean? That and do. that separation of like, let's say, for example, something being common knowledge if you're in the trade or the profet mm. or whatever, rather than, oh, it's common knowledge because it's all over people's fucking social media mm. and every fan knows it and every hanger on and everyone's grand who follows it. it you know, so what I'm saying is that separation. So it allowed us to operate in a, in a bit of a way where it's like we're in that reclusive artist state mm. or we're just in our little artist world where like that's who we interact with. And then when we come out, it's like we come out, boom, 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 boom. Like you say, pageantry is a great word mm -hmm. for it the fucking circus. You deal with the circus for a minute and then you you go back. Whereas now it doesn't operate like that now. It's now it's constant. Now it's like a drip. It's yeah. a constant drip, like one way or the other. And maybe obviously if you're younger and that's like normal, in then it's that's just how you're gonna operate and you're gonna find that normal. If, I have to explain to like a, someone in their twenties, yo, for me, it is just the inconvenience. Whereas for them, that's like, oh, what do you mean? That's part and parcel of mm. being an artist, right? What do you mean you don't like being on Instagram. No, I don't. I don't want to deal with any social media, mm. but because we didn't have to do it. So, you know what I mean? It's like, what fucking job does anybody want to be told? You wake up, you go to work and they're like, okay, you know that your job description is X. Well, from now on, you also have to do yeah. all of this other <sighs> shit. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants that in any job. Mm. So I think people don't, people miss that part. Oh my for like, God. no, gee, look, I'm older. Like, yeah. You imagine you just went to work and they said, now you have to do, now you are also the PR department. I'm not the fucking PR department. Mm. So I don't know. So yeah, I, I don't know how we even got to onto. Yeah, but yeah, but to the, oh yeah, the drip. Mm. It's like a drip, drip, drip. Mm. Either way now, you don't get to fully, do you know what? I keep coming back to that because we I was talking about this mm -hmm. earlier. It's just going to keep being a, it, it, do you know what it is though? I think it's because I'm waiting for somebody to say to me like, oh, no. Nah, no, nah, this group, this artist collective or this thing, oh no, those guys, they're just operating like that. And I'm going to be like, okay, cool, plug me in. Mm. Let me go work. Because it really Cause, isn't like that. Because it's really not. It doesn't, yeah. all, what I get is people going, yeah, I feel like this. Yeah, like my team is sitting me down every week telling me I've got to do more. Yeah. I've got to do TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that is what artists, that's what people don't understand. That is the conversations artists, you know, when you yeah. go up the chain. Yeah. The work doesn't go away. It just gets more. You've now got a team mm. and the guy from the label and all these other, and honestly, this isn't my situation, mm. but that's what I'm saying. So if you go down the chain, even more pressure to do all of that stuff yourself because mm -hmm. it's the only thing you can do, right? You better be on social media 24-7 mm. screaming because you ain't got a label, you ain't got yeah. a publicist, you ain't got shit, but you've Time got a phone. management. You've got a phone. Yeah. But so the onus is on this back to your cookie cutter thing. Mm. The onus is on spending as much time as possible doing self promoting the song that you spent least amount of time on the song or mm. the art or the what it doesn't just apply to songs, mm. whatever it is. Least amount of time on the thing, most amount of time self promoting. Mm. So that's down the chain. And as you go up the chain, now you've got a team mm. that are like instead of just the focus being like creating more resources for you to do whatever it is you do mm. with the art, it's like, you're not doing enough TikTok. You're not doing, doing enough. enough. Yeah. That's really is, mm. that's, it's kind of wild, man. You just think, well, why, why the fuck would anyone, the, if you want to do that, that's a completely different drive. Yeah. To what any, for what I understand as like the people that I know that wanted to be artists, not just like rap or hip hop, just people who wanted to be artists and be creative. Mm. Uh, they were driven, all of them, no matter what the discipline was, were driven by something completely different. Yeah. Other than maybe like some of the kind of more like, I want to be a pop star, I want to be a Hollywood. But it's kind of like that value set has just like flooded, like just infect, like yeah. stretched across everything else. Yeah. 
Whereas that was like quite specific. The kid, do you know, do you know what I mean? There was yeah. kids who were like an art school for the art and then kids at the art school to be a star out yeah. of being an art school. That's and right. you could differentiate quite quickly. And people mm. would wear it on their sleeve mm. that that's what they were about. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And whereas it just suddenly, now it's now just become, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, my favourite one, I'm drop this one in here because I always uh, have to bring this one up in conversation because I want everyone to hear it. And this is a Jenna G quote, shout out to Jenna G. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're having a conversation it. about the culture, for lack of a better term. It's a long time ago now, but she said something that I repeat all the time because it stuck with me. She was like, counterculture now is all access. <laughs> and that's not even now. This was like 10, mm -hmm. 15 years ago. But just to explain wow. the way shit shifted. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. So even something that is quote unquote counterculture, which what our understanding of that means that it's inaccessible mm. to the mainstream, but everything is all access. So the counterculture now is all access. It's like, well, what, How what is the what how culture functions changes mm. completely when that when that happens? Hundred percent. Wow. It's th this is all access. There's no yeah. paywall. There's no. Nothing, I mean, yeah. shit. You get your shit cut off and you can't get online. You ain't seen nothing. <laughs> right, but whereas before you would like back to like the dark and cold example. Yeah. Before this would have been something that would have been hard probably copy. a shorter form, hard copy. You've either got to go to the shop that's got it behind the counter. You know, yeah. you've got to have the mail order detail. You've got the flyer that had like the PO box on well, you, it or I mean, something. And you've got to show up. That's the thing as well. You can't just... Um, actually, right, actually right. while we're on the subject, because I definitely just want to um, touch on some of the uh, historical moments oh, of right. Jess. I, I made the mistake of pointing out that you, you hadn't done it yet. No, we, no, right, we so can check skip this out. all that no, shit. No, no, no. There's just something that I really, really... Because on this uh, uh, overactive, fucking always available, content-consuming world... Champions of Nature was a project that you... Yeah, come on, man. Like, if you're of an age, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. One of the most, for me, seminal moments of, like, a collective fucking project that you were spearheading, along with a small handful of others, of course, as at least eight to ten MCs <laughs> at any one given time. And, and you know, Salsa Smurf, like... I can't find it anywhere. I'll be fucked if I can find right. anything. So, so there is this. Oh right, you know what I'm like, I hadn't thought about that. Like digital, like it's not you. None of it's on DSP. No, or any you'd have right. to. You'd have to. I mean, I, I think I'm probably oh speaking God. for the majority. Get, let's, let's get that up there, baby. Let's, Come no, on. But yeah, but you would have to get like <laughs> Lee or Cohen to like sort it out or something because that. Ain't, oh my. That's a, God. That's a whole tapestry to unpick. Yeah, I'd never thought about that. Yo, know, the can of worms that it but, would be to. It, it's a bit, see, this is what I mean, though. But that's a great example of just. This is how, well, no, but how also, how, no, but that's how undeveloped our industry still is. Yeah. That might, that when you've made me, I've never thought about that, but like, oh yeah, from a fan point of view, yeah. oh, surely there's a market to have all that stuff up on DSPs mm. now. Mm. And there is, there is legitimately a market for that. Mm. Like if, even if it's just like, Lewis's fan base yeah, wants yeah, yeah. to hear it, totally. right? Like even if you just pick one, yeah. group member right um but then when i think about the reality of how not only what the business structure of what it, you know that that it was back mm. then when the music was made yeah let alone like what that is now which mm. is non-existent is how do you even do that yeah. whereas you know what i mean so even when you hear these horror stories where it's like oh such and such label has still got the rights or such and such won't give up the rights mm. or this label's got the recorded but the, there's this with the publishers or whatever there's not even like that authority to go to with it's any of that because nightmare. we just owned it yeah. we just owned it but yeah. i don't know whether anyone went and i don't know who knows that's that's crazy yo i shouldn't even kind of exposing too much but it's true i don't know what, how you even do that because when you but it's funny because you bring bring up i think of wordplay i think of source of like course, the, the record yeah. label mm. and um yeah the record we should have we should have yeah. just gone in and just done the yeah not the magazine this yeah. predates the magazine 
Yeah, we should have actually just signed the album deal with like, we we were offered an album deal mm. by them. We were offered a decent amount of money. And because there were so many people in the group. Where to begin, isn't it? Well, just people in the group would uh, there was just a the bit delusions of grandeur of like we're worth X amount and mm. if you sign us for X amount and we split it between all of us, that's only X this amount, amount yeah. of money. But when if you really look at it, it's like yeah, but you that is still X amount of money and you don't, and where have you even come up with this? Cal I think man, we're coming up with calculations of like, if we take that, then we'd have to campaign the record for this long. And that means we'd have to live off that money for this long. Mm. It's like, that didn't even make no sense anyway, because you're going to, mm. what artist, see, it was funny. Cause for me, I was like the youngest one in the group. Yeah. Mate, I think. But because my I was doing what I was doing with my solo thing, like Lewis was doing his solo. This was thing. an extra thing. You yeah, had but thing also, else but yeah. like Lewis was doing his solo thing, but he kind of had major label infrastructure around him, mm -hmm. right? Big up Lewis Parker, by the way. Big yeah, up exactly. Lewis Parker. But the, having that kind of infrastructure around him gave him that artist luxury of being able to just be in the lab creating yeah. and not worry too much about what was going on with the business. I think because I was doing so much with low life y and whatever and doing my look I was kind of seeing a bit more how it was like worked mm. so to the point of like whether an artist is really going to have to live off the album advance for however long it's like well we're, we're doing it we're getting no album advance mm. in some we're not mm. but we get but there's money for shows exactly now if you're going to be signed to what is essentially a major label because basically it was Virgin mm. and they've already invested X amount because they're giving you this advance you could be damn sure they're going to want to make sure you've got some fucking shows because mm. they want to make sure your album Turn it sells. Because yeah. again, there was no social media to sell your album yeah. off. You've got to physically go out and campaign. So that's in stores mm. and tours. Mm. So that was a ma major mistake. And to be fair, I mean, they probably offered us more or less what they bloody offered Slum Village for all mm. I know. Like, look, because. Mm. Oh, yeah, of course. You, you, yeah, do you know what I mean? Or, 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 or um, Thousand Fallacy Infusion. Yeah. You know, the, um, Mark, Mark B. And Blade. Blade. Yeah. We, I don't think we were getting offered like a... But I never went that deep to start asking mm. and find out what other people's deals look like. Mm. But I think we just kind of... Yeah, I think everybody bugged out. I, like me, I would have just been like, yes, whatever, I don't care. I just want to make the record. Like I would have been... I'd have gone... Not like I'm down to get jerked by the label, mm -hmm. but like we're not really here for that anyway, right? And again, Lewis had his, everyone had their other things popping off. Uh, yeah, I think it got that bro. Got, this this it's this deep whole we conversation. Here, though, it's deep. It got no, it's great. Beautiful. Shout out to you know. Shout out to all, ev all yeah, every all member of chat. Yeah, even if you even if man think that there's some type of beat, yo, it's all love. On my side, it's all love. I got you know, and yeah. I can actually safely say, like you know, I can only think of one person who who might you know who I think would yeah, my man probably wouldn't reciprocate me saying it's all mm -hmm. love. But with the rest mm. of them, it's all love, man. Like, it's all love, bro. And you know what's really important I might add here as a caveat is that this conversation here, this part is pure prosperity prosperity for me because I wanted to... I was like, yo, that was my, my favourite era, favourite time. It's, it's such like, a beautiful yo, crew. I mean, like I say, I just wish... I, you know, I just wish we'd got to make the record, mm. man. And, like, there was even... Yeah, for me, it was just about the music, man. Yeah. I just... Beautiful. The... Oh. the, the this still, yeah, that was crazy. Because mm. I could even, it's funny because it's like, there's even stuff where I'm like, didn't we press such and such a song on like the B side of that, but then it got changed and like, wait mm. a minute, have I got a copy of that song? Like things mm. that like, even I don't remember clearly enough to know like like hidden songs. Mm. Do, you, do you get mm. what I'm saying? Wow. There was so much weirdness oh, oh, oh. going on with like, Mm. we'd get like a test press in and mm. then Dolo would be like, no, nah, I'm going to go and cut it again. And then they'd come back and then there'd be like a different, one of the songs would have changed or something. Mm. And I'd be like, wait, wasn't there two versions of this? And mm. I, so I don't know. I think there's even some, because when, when I, with the mix thing, I tried to get everything on there, but I don't even know if I even managed to get everything mm. on there. But anyway, this, this is super, it, this is super nerd, like super nerd. <laughs> wow. I love it. Um, can I just a point? Shout out uh, Evil D. We, uh, you know, production Evil D. We have to. Oh, e Evil Ed. Evil Ed. Do you not bad. beat mine as Sorry, Evil D. One. Shout out Evil D as well. Though. Yeah, shout that, out Evil Can D. I just want to mean? No, this will be an edit. Can I at this point shout oh. out <laughs> Evil Ed? No, that was ill. That's a dope one because then yeah. I get to talk oh, yeah, about yeah. beat okay. miners. Okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, Evil Ed, 
I have to big nah, shout see, out that Evil Legend. Up to, yo, um, that's my. Well, it's one of them, innit? Mm. That's a. That's a, because I know, because I know he was such a, you know. Some... It, it, yeah, evil. I, yeah, and I was saying to you earlier, and it's like, oh damn, his name didn't come up the other day when mm. I, I was we was talking and talking about some of the producers with uh, Giles Peterson, but mm. Evil Edge, yeah, in, incredible, and still doing the thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Because I guess Ed was kind. Of, I, is it safe to say that like tape kind of? Era, this is we're going really off here mm. in a way. Mm. That tape era shit though. Mm. Did you mm. hear so any of the other stuff he was doing in that era? Like no, there was just a guy, there was a um, guy called McKeith. Mm. Is it McKeith? Ed had different stuff, go, mm. yeah, going. But I mean, this is that whole blunted bumpkin buskers hidden identity mm. stuff he did. Yeah, he had a vinyl. He had a record out in like ninety four or something. Oh, ninety something crazy early. And we can't overlook so, as well. We can't overlook the fact that as a producer as well, you. are you're extremely proficient. Oh, right. I learned a lot of stuff from Ed on that level because yeah. I didn't, you know, that's the, you know, actually with the equipment. Yeah. Like. Mad. Like literally technical yeah. stuff. Because, you know, he had, you know, he had the little setup. See, he randomly was, I think must have been for whatever reason, job or study or whatever it was. He was living in Huddersfield. Mm. He's not from, he's from like, like late on Buzzard, I think, or mm. somewhere in this, this, kind of north of London but um, he was in Huddersfield and we linked up uh, that's how we linked up because I already knew some of the music mm. that he'd put out what from before I even okay so, right so before I moved up to Huddersfield I was in the south certain different pits of Sussex yeah. pick up Crawley crew oh, Crawley, right very close to Crawley yeah but I could I could pick up Kiss, so I would listen to Max and Dave, mm. and the few little UK bits they would play in that era because it was a little bit kind of after the all the Britcore stuff mm. was kind of petering out, and there wasn't a lot of UK stuff that would get played. But they would actually play this Hidden Identity record, heavy. So it, then later being living in moving up to Huddersfield mm. and then being like oh right what this guy I think the guy one of the record shop guys was like oh there's this guy Evil Ed and I'm like oh I know what Hidden Identities I kind of knew there was some I knew the music already and randomly he was like living there wow and then that's how we ended up linking up and just he started working on Y&R stuff and work, you know he'd like showing me so the 950 and mad. showing me the uh, Cubase on the Atari and just just learning, man, learning about beat making, mm. learning about... Because you've got ideas about it, but until you can see something actually... Fit, like, he's probably the first person that was, like, older than me, the more accomplished with the... You know, had some background in making records mm. that I ever got to, like, just sit down and, like, see how he worked and, That's like, crazy. learn techniques and be, like... And be invited to kind of co-produce with him, you know, like, beats like yeah. the Ophelia, Tommy Evans beat came out of just, like... That's just me going around and wow. being, I will make a beat. <laughs> so there was, like, a couple things on Premonition... I think a couple things on Premonitions that are just Ed's beats. So I was like, I need this beat, I'm going to rhyme on this. Mm. And then there's at least one thing on there, I think it's the intro is just something that we just made mm. together. Like, oh, we'll just make a, we'll just make something. <laughs> so that was like, that really, when I think about it now, that's a really fucking big deal. Yeah, of to course. Eat, to, because of what you learn when you actually get to, um, someone allows Spa. you into that. Yeah, but someone yeah. allows you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, it, it, you know, you're getting to see the process. You're getting to actually mm. understand like the, the the tools, and you're gonna pick up techniques like a lot a lot quicker. So with the uh, with that in mind, of course. Anyway, anyway yeah, yes, yeah. we do have the new album, and uh, yes, uh, more cool and awesome, which you know has a, a plethora of different uh, vibes on it. I went to the uh, the listening party, and it's fucking great. Uh, you gave out to these beautiful promos, and bro, like. <laughs> oh, the Matt, yeah, just Matt, so much out Matt Littler for the artwork yeah the artwork's hard um, but yeah just so much variety on the beats production collaboration big up Sonny Jim of course right I mean if you go, let, 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 let's list them off let's list them off um, oh, 
<laughs> Hold on, hold on. <laughs> just MC, Confucius MC. Sorry, I'm just reading it off because the, 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 con- the contagious Confucius, Confucius MC. MC, yeah. Eva Lazarus, obviously. But this was a re- released before that, you know, I'm just picking right, up right, tracks right. randomly. But this is a full bodied piece of work. This is, this is where you are at in 2023 right, right now, right? Go cop that. Go, go, go cop that right now. <laughs> go cop that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a, it's the magnum opus, in my opinion, of of of, uh, of your your quality control and content of uh, of music. I feel it's like the fucking appreciate that man. The real yeah. deal. This is what it's come to. It's just what we do, isn't it? It's just uh, yeah. You happy with it? it? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a weird one because it's just it's never taken so long to get. I mean, the the, the whole sitting everybody down for two years. Mm. Mm. This all should have happened the other side of everything. Mm. It's just, yeah, so it's just mad. It's very, it's a little surreal. It's a little kind of, more so than like other releases have been mm. just because of what it represents. Mm. Like. The journey of it. Yeah, it's not even necessarily the music that's on it that actually getting the thing out, mm. like getting it over the line of it. Mm. You know, like I could have just completely disappeared over the, that period. Mm. You know, I think mm. a lot of people probably did as well. Mm. I don't. I think a lot of people haven't really, still haven't really uh, survived, wasn't it? Separated well, a lot of. Well, yeah, a lot of the, the talk whole, from action. Well, music industry and entertainment industry and all that didn't just stop for pandemic. It's like completely shrunk over the last mm. few years. But I think that's a little bit kind of like not in the narrative or not mm. in the understanding the kind mm. you know everybody thinks that we kind of stopped and then we started again mm. but if you actually look at like statistically what happened like there were certain reports that came out and stuff mm. even i had some people sending me kind of like some of the government reports and things mm. that were happening over that time and there was all kinds of statistics about like however many festivals mm. closed and that would not be able to yeah. come back is is it had a huge impact on the like the industry and the economy around the industry mm. in the UK definitely that's where there was an artist recently who put a, some, a quite a kind of mainstream artist I forget who it was um I do can't remember who it was who did posted some stuff recently about right. all of the stuff she'd been dealing with over like mm. tours getting rescheduled and this and that and the whole yeah. impact and just saying like no one's talking about this but do you know what, I'm out and basically kind of like Tapped leaving out. Right. Ta- yeah tapping out of the music industry kind of thing I can't remember who that was now or, or words yeah, yeah. to that effect yeah. words to that effect of like and enough was like that's, that's real that's really yeah. real like because it can come close to that but I'm sure it well, did not who, who, yeah exactly exactly it's um yeah so that's kind of still surreal in a way mm. still kind of living through that well we after effect it, it, just, yeah it just was all yeah man it's just been oh, it's just been super long just, bro. Actually, i don't even want to get looking to into it. it look we've got here for those uh listening not watching as a and of, this is some product play this is some yeah, uh, some heavy shit like what you what you call it qvc QV inlay card it's almost like a poster. This is some QVC on, shit, son. right? Here. Yeah, 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 totally. And this comes with a beautiful uh, inlay card and, uh, you know, a double gate forward uh, it's CD, but we can have it in vinyl as well. That's really, be- that's really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? That's the- uh, it's also fucking great, available man. on a... It's fucking great. And listen, yeah. on that listening party, I was absolutely enamoured. I-, I just thought it was fucking great. And all the heads were inside. Um, um, yeah, it was very last minute and it, so it was very, like... Liquor yeah, store. Ra- very, TT liquor. Um, well, no, nah, but you know, you're always, it's always that thing in it where you're like, I didn't, ah, oh, this person didn't get invited mm. or that person didn't. Or just, you know, you're Little always, ra- no, nah, but you know, it's a bit, no, nah, sometimes that's a big thing. But it's just, this you do, it's just, that's what I mean. It still feels chaotic. It still mm. feels kind of chaotic, kind of being back, like, mm. out here. You know what I mean? Just in general. Because we were doing shows, we started doing a run when the whole thing shut down mm. and then that took until after everything started back up to actually go back out and even finish that run of shows mm. then while we were actually doing the run after like rescheduling it over like what are we talking like a two-year period mm-hmm. we then had to shut down the last show because everybody tested positive for the thing 
So then we still had to go back out and finish the tip. So like the I, so we were literally still wow. trying to f- had unfinished business mm. from before Mad. the pandemic all the way up until. To start, like start a lot like first quarter of last year I can't remember I just felt like it just kept dragging and dragging for whatever and then it's even come up in conversation now about to go out and do a run of shows and it's like yeah. people talking about like oh you know the such and such has got this tested positive I'm like are we still doing it is this still a thing yes. aren't we can we not just go back to work mm. yes I don't know like, I shouldn't even be putting that fucking out here and tempting fate <laughs> no, no, but you good. know what I mean like he that, will be playing shows also I shouldn't even be mentioning that because you get your whole fucking video like axed <laughs> no, for even right. saying the word so we actually just the cut algorithm, all yeah, that, the algorithm is no, all fucking bonkers real yeah. shit yeah. just cut all that part out let's do let's start that again where were we <laughs> so yeah it's just been some really surreal yeah, it's sur- really surreal. Surreal, a surreal Groundhog edit. Day sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be a pleasure seeing you live. So, Doctor's Orders, that's in February, 16th of February? Are we talking? Is that the right time? 9th. 9th of February. Soon. Very yeah, soon. Very soon. Well, we'll get this out before then, and you know what it is. This is the more calling awesome uh, album, and uh, just in the building. You're just saying that like as if only, pe- only Londoners are going to see this, man. Like, they're all going to see this. International, gonna, baby. Well, not even that, but just like, they're all going to see this, they bro. Are. So, it's actually, crazy. it's like, yeah, it's. Um, London on the 9th, Leeds on the 10th. Tell them. Preston on the 11th. Tell them. Back on, I think, the 17th in Bristol, the 18th in Stroud, yeah. and then the 19th in Manchester. Well, if only, if only I'd had that down for like <laughs> uh, the BBC the other yeah. day, I'd have been a t- yo, killing it. That's with another the media exclusive. Tra- <laughs> see, look, see, look, look, Keller's so high ranking that I have to go to the Beeb to get my media training, <laughs> and then I come here and I get it get it right. Yeah, is that what it is? Listen, we only have the realist it, it, on the podcast, just, baby. That's just the warm up. Come over. on. It's just the, yeah, mm, wow, well, yeah, we did that. That's the sales pitch. Tickets, okay. jess.co.uk for tickets. Come on, no, you're not going to And, you know, and merch table, come get the sign joint. Yeah. You know what I mean? Blam That's it. it up. That's it. The stickers gonna, are there too. You gonna, you come, we'll make it look, we'll make the album look like that for you. Yeah, you just yeah. got on, a, on, a, mark on. For those For those ain't looking... Uh, yeah, he's referring to the board that has an, an inundated that's, that's level of graffiti exactly, writers that are coming exactly. for the podcast. You know what it is? This is the exclusive lane that uh, only a few tread. Uh, friends of mine that come through. This is part of the street culture tapestry gesture. Well, most definitely from the jump, a part of that tapestry, Pleasure my brother. To come through, my appreciate the invitation. Oh, it's been a long time, long time coming. Man. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mom. and this won't be the last neither. Yeah, so this is it. Just new album, go get it now. If not, go on the streets and get into those venues and start pumping the fists like this. Killer Keller podcast, out like in was out of fashion. Big shout out to everybody, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? Don't talk to anyone else, I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>